Hi, and welcome to Match Move for Production by VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this video, we'll be moving on to shot MM20. What we'll do first, we'll just play through the shot so we can see what we're going to track, then we'll open 3D Equalizer. So 3D Equalizer is opened. You should have a UI like this. If you don't, you can go down to Environments and select Basic, and that will reset your UI to this workspace. But the first thing that we need to do is import our image sequence. So if you've purchased the data package from the Gumroad store, it's great because then you can follow through with me step by step and you'll also get some great data for some personal projects and stuff. If you haven't, you can use, still use your own footage, but you may get stuck at some point if you don't have the same data as I do. So if we go up to our top left here and select our sequence one camera, and we can go to our right where it says live action footage, we can select browse. Then we want to navigate over to our folder and so it's MM20, hammer, and we'll go over to plates, and we'll load in this one. And this here is another 2K plate. So if we click OK, and now we've loaded in our image sequence. So you can see it's coming quite dark, because our plates are transcoded in a linear color space. So if we go to our 8-bit color conversion on the right, and go to our gamma, and change that to 2.6. So now it's come back to a normal viewing space. So we'll try and play through, but we can't because it's quite laggy. So we have to export out our image cache. So first of all, I'll just save. So I'll go 3D4 at the bottom left, save project. And I'll just make a new directory. And I'll call this the same, same name as the shop. Okay, so now we want to go down to our playback and export buffer compression file. So now that's exported, we now want to import it back in. So click import and that will load it in. So now if you press spacebar, we can see what we're going to track. So if you open your camera data file, then you should have a notepad with some camera data in. And you know it's shot on a black magic 4k we've got the sensor size and what lens was used but we don't know what focal length so as for always i'll always just use the film back height and i'll let the film back width do a passive adjustment because the image sequence may have a different aspect ratio so if i go over to my film back height i think 11.88 you need to make sure you put millimeter in there otherwise it will be straight away think it's centimeters and we'll leave our focal length as 30 mil because we don't really know what it is yet so now if we go to our point groups at the top left open that up and we want to go to 3d models right click add new import obj file and if we go to our data package we can go to set geo and we've got a hammer geo in it so if we click ok we press F5, we can't see anything at the moment, but if we click center models, it will now center our camera around the hammer. So we can press shift and left click and just rotate around. And it might be quite difficult to see which way this is orientated. So what we can do, if we go to our 3D models, select our hammer, and we can go to texture mapping here and select UV map and select the hammer diff then click OK. We can't see anything yet because we need to turn off our show lines and turn on show polygons. And now we can see the texture. If we go to F6, we can now see the texture on the hammer. So if we go back to F5, we just move this to the side so we can sort of see which way it is. And you can sort of see straight away it's orientated in the correct position. So if we make uh, a line at the point by selecting Extract Vertex, hold control and left click I'm just going to use this knot in the wood as the main lineup it's going to be quite hard to see at the moment because we don't we can't see through it so we'll just do a rough lineup just select extract vertex hold control and left click to make a lineup point 
because it's sort of going funny there because I can't quite figure it out because we've only got two line up points. If we do that again, select extract vertex, hold control and left click. And we'll pull this corner up and you see it starts to come back into place. And we'll just adjust them a little bit. And we'll try and get them as lined up as best as possible. And we can flick between the 3D model to see what, how it's lining up. So now we've got a rough lineup, we can just store our pose. If we go to F2, we can make some single frame lineup points to do a lock our single frame in, and get it a little bit better. So if we hold control and left click, I'm just going to make a tracking marker. I'm not going to track it, I'm just going to leave as it is. I'll resize it because it's quite a small area, but that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it for the same as all the other, these other bit of orange markers. single frames, I'm not tracking anything yet. So if we go to F5, we can turn our 3D model off and we can sort of see, if we flick between our 3D model, we can see how far these points are off. So I'm going to select my first one. I can turn my 3D model off and I'm going to select, because there might not, might not be a vertice there, I'm going to select extract polygon, turn my 3D model back on, and I'm going to select on that corner as close as possible. Turn my 3D model off, select my next point, and just do this for all the points. So extract polygon, and that's on that bottom left hand corner of this marker. You see, it's gone a bit funny. Don't worry, that will happen because we are projecting point. Uh, we're extracting vertices to survey, so it might go a little bit funny. But if we just continue doing it, it should be it should fix itself. So we've got this one under here, which is on the corner, which we can't see. So we hold shift and just left click, and we'll right click to zoom out of it. Then we'll select extract polygon, we'll select that area. You can see it's pulled it back in. So if we just keep going through all these points. corner. So we've got this one down here. This one's going to be quite important. That's on that corner. So it may not fit absolutely perfectly, but it'll be pretty close. Point up here. Extract polygon. We've got this last one here on here. And you can see it's pretty much on it straight away. So we'll still just extract onto it. I can press Alt C. We've now locked our camera into that position. We can delete our lineup points. And what we'll also do, we'll do it because we're trusting our 
So you can see it's kind of off here. We're going to trust where we've surveyed our points and we're going to do a quick focal length adjustment because we don't know what the focal length is, is for this shot yet. So we'll go to lens, focal length and change fixed to adjust. Then we we'll go to windows and select parameter adjustment window. So we'll change this to adaptive, select adjust. Alt C. We can flick between, and you can see that's already made it look a lot better. But we can probably yeah. There's probably a certain amount where this model is not exactly the same sort of outline as this, but we can extract vertex select it, sort of pull it a little bit to the edge, even though we've surveyed this pretty accurately we can, the closer we get this, we're covering up the hammer I guess the, the less you have to paint out and we can go over line up like that, so if we flick between that's pretty pretty good so if we store our pose Select all our survey points, right click, modify, survey 3, then go edit, project points onto 3D models, let's zoom in, oh so to turn my 3D model off, sorry, select all your points, edit, project points onto 3D models, just zoom in so they're all projected, or well, most of them are. And just press Alt C. And now that's locked that into place. So we can delete our lineup points. And from that solve, we got uh, basically a 17mm focal length. So if we go to our cameras, and we can bring in our lens grid for this focal length now. So if we right click, add new reference camera. And that'll create a reference camera under our sequence camera. So we double click on that to activate it. And go over to live action footage and select browse. Now you can go to your data package and select lens grid. And we don't have, oh, sorry, what was it? I think it was a 17 millimeter. We have an 18 millimeter though. So if we select okay on that. And if we press F3 to go to our distortion grid menu, because it's quite dark, because this is also at a, uh, a linear color space. So if we change our gamma and our 8 bit color conversion here to 2.2, and that will bring it back to a better viewing space. So if we select this top right hand point and click and drag it till it snaps to a corner, then do the same to the top right corner of this square and the bottom left on this square. Now if you click snap, that'll snap all the points of this grid to the lens grid. So now we need to extend it out for the entire lens grid. So hold control and press up and that'll extend it upwards and hold control and press down and that'll extend it down. And the same with left and right, holding control and pressing, sorry, left. Then control right to go right. If you go over, it doesn't matter because it will automatically disable them. But if you want to delete them, hold shift and press right. So now all we need to do is go to the top where it says calc, calculate distortion and camera geometry, then select calculate lens parameters. And that will solve our distortion for this lens, and then we'll set parameters and close. We can preview this distortion with this tab here. And then if we go to our top left where it says cameras in our object browser, double click on our sequence camera, and we can preview the distortion and it's been transferred over to our image sequence. So now if we go back to F5, solve again with Alt-C, and we can look at our lineup, and it's, it's pretty good. Still, so... Yeah, 
So a single frame is done now. So if we select all our points, in fact, actually, because this is a lock off camera, that's just done for the camera, sorry. So if you save now, the 3D port save project as, just save it in the same place and I'll overwrite. Our next step would be to make our animation for our hammer. So if we go up to our point groups, right click on our point groups here and add new point group. And this will make a point group two and it'll automatically change it to an object. So if we go into our point group one, 3D models and select our hammer geo, we can turn this off. And if we double click on our point group two, we can go to 3D models, right click and import OBJ file. Then you want to go to your set geo and select your hammer geo again. You can select OK. And now your hammer has come in at the exact same point. So we can store this pose. Hopefully that should keep it in that position. So now if we go to F2, we can start tracking some of these points. So if we hold control left click to make a tracking point and we'll resize it tight around the marker. We need to bring this search box in because there's quite a lot of orange markers here, so it might jump. So if we gauge marker, select track, you can see it's kind of jumping around because we're not on center 2D. So select center 2D. You always want to be on center 2D when you do tracking. And you can see it's, it's quite tight around the track. So now we'll do this for the other points. So control left click. We'll just resize the, the box, the tracking box and we'll gauge mark it and track. We don't need to track every single one of these, but we can focus on some main points that we would like. So just resize around here, resize our search box, gauge mark it and track. Same for up here. get a decent spread for our animation. Just some down here. Got quite a lot at the top of the hammer but nothing at the the base. Gauge marker and track. It's quite dark here, so we'll just try and go in quite tight. Gauge marker and track. It's quite jumpy there. It may not be a good place to track, so what we'll actually do is we'll select this whole bottom part and track this part here. Gauge marker and track. get this guy under here as well. And gauge marker and track. So if we select all our points and we can have a look see what points we've tracked and we should have a pretty good spread of tracks now. So if we press F5 we can select all our points and go edit project points on 3D models and all nine of them have projected. So now we can press Alt C and select Use Result. And you can see in the deviation browser, it's really good. It's, it's very flat. Like it looks spiky, but in the grand scheme of things, that's such a low number. So if we press Spacebar and play through, we can see that our hammer is pretty much perfectly tracking to uh, the plate hammer. Full frame that and watch it. And we can just we can just double check it by checking center three D. That's that's pretty perfect. So we'll just save that. Let's go three D four. Save project as. I'll just overwrite. 
So now we're done with this shot. We've done our locked off camera. And now we've done our object track for our hammer. So now we can bring this animation into Maya. So now we need to export our camera. So if we go to 3D4, export project, so it's Maya. Change the frame rate to 1001. And I'll make sure that you change it to no 3D models at all because it will be it's always better to export these out a little separate from the actual camera file. So if we export the file and we'll save it to a place that we know and I'll call it the same name and I'll select OK and then I'll select OK again and that's exported out the camera. So now we need to export out our, our hammer. So I'll go to frame one, then press F6. I'll rotate around, you can see it's there. So if I go 3D models, I'll select it here. Make sure you select your geometry, otherwise you won't export it. You can select 3D models, export 3D model as OBJ. Select browse, and we'll save it at the same place. We'll call it hammer SFLEP for single frame lineup. Okay, and now that's exported. So now we'll go file, ex we'll export out our distortion node. So go file, export, nuke LD 3D distortion node. And we'll do the same. We'll call it the shot name, which should be 007. Then the last thing we need to do is render out our undistorted plate. So if we go to 3D4 and run warp 4, you should get this window come up. So now if we go down to destination footage and select save footage, go browse, and we'll go to our shop And we'll make a new directory because if we don't, we'll, we'll fill up our directory with loads of images and I'll call it UDP for undistorted plate. So I'll call this the same name as the shop. And I'll call it UDP for undistorted plate. We will do dot four hashes dot EXR. And the four hashes signify that we're going to render out our image sequence. So if we click OK, and I'll change my scale to 50%, so then we've got a half res plate in Maya, so it's a little bit lighter. Then we'll select render. We'll start getting green bars now. And this will be rendering out our understorted plate. Cool, so that's that done now. So if you go File, Exit, we're now done in 3D Equalizer. Our next step would be to go import our files into Maya and uh, prepare our animation for our hammer. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.